Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Back in 1979, I moved to Miami, Florida to work for an electronics company, uh, an, an importer of radios from Japan. And I lived in sort of the southern part of Miami, well away from the ocean, a good, good 10 minute drive to a sort of a, sort of a beach, but it wasn't exactly what you would call a beach with breakers and ocean spray and vast views or anything like that. It, it was in a town called Perrine, one of the uh, unincorporated areas of South Miami at that time. Um, I don't know what, what's, uh, what, it, what it is now, whether they ever incorporated or not, but I uh, remember wanting to go on little mini vacations to the ocean's shore along Brevard County, particularly Indy Atlantic and Melbourne Beach. So that summer, the summer of 1979, several times I went up on weekends to, from Miami to Melbourne Beach and in the Atlantic and stayed in a motel. I don't remember the name of the motel, uh, a nice little motel in a town, as I said, called in the Atlantic. You can look at it on a map and see where I went. I drove up Interstate 95 every, every other weekend, just about, and spend a little time listening to the ocean and clearing my mind out from the heavy duty work at the electronics company. Miami was a fast paced town, diverse, ethnically diverse, a lot of Cuban people there who were very hard working and uh, very fast paced, whereas in the, in the Atlantic and Melbourne Beach were just upstate Florida country towns that happened to be on the ocean. They were regular old southern folks there, not so in Miami. So I got a little bit of respite now and then. One night when I was driving back, once probably a Sunday night, when I was driving back to Miami from the Melbourne area along Interstate 95, I came across a car that had broken down and there was a family standing by it, just standing there, hoping that somebody had come by and helped them. It was a mother and two or three kids. And I had a two meter radio in that car, a two meter FM radio. Didn't do my native fist of CW, but it, it provided communication with hams along the way from Miami to Melbourne and back. Kept me in contact in case I broke down, but they didn't have any radio. They didn't have anybody. There was here there, just this mother and her two or three kids standing by the car at night on Interstate 95, hoping somebody would come along, somebody who they could trust, who might drive them home. That somebody happened to be me. Why did I trust them? I was adventurous. Why did they trust me? God only knows. But they did. And in my little, I believe it was a, called a Pontiac Aster, they always used to, well, it was a subcompact car. Um, the mother, I guess, must have, the mother and her three kids, one of the kids sat up front with me and the mother and the other couple of kids sat in the back. She was a good deal older than I was, I guess. I don't know. I, I, but I talked on that two meter radio all the way back 200 miles or so to Miami at night. And I often wonder, what 
do you suppose these kids and their mother were thinking when I was talking on that radio with other people? The first thing that must have occurred to the mother was, we're safe with this guy in case he breaks down, in case his car breaks down, he can call for help. But the kids, I wonder what they thought. Uh, I think they, they spoke fairly good English, so they must have understood English, but I wonder what they were thinking of this ham radio jargon that came along over that two meter radio. And I uh, chatted with people all the way back, quite a long drive there, three or four hours. And uh, the mother gave me directions street by street when we got to Miami and I left them off at their home. No charge. And uh, I wonder though, maybe I'll ask you, what do you suppose they were thinking? Huh, this guy sure has bad breath. I hope we can last all the way back to Miami before we puke or die. Or maybe they were thinking, geez, that's, that's, that's cool stuff, that radio. Or something in between cool radios and vile vomit. I'll never know. I'll never know. But I thought I'd just deliver you a little fireside chat and let you tell me, what do you suppose they were thinking? I'm pretty sure they, they knew English all right because the Cubans just about all spoke English in, in Miami. The only thing I regretted about the Cubans in Miami was that I couldn't speak Spanish. I wish I could. Maybe, maybe we could have had a conversation on their level, but they were silent. The mother was silent and the radio and I were alive with chatter. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 and so long for now, which in my native fist, not on two meter FM, but I wish it could have translated into, or would, would have translated into, did da 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 da